So we've had a little bit of fun making some grass. Now we're going to have a go at some other different plants. And um, so I've got here some different shapes and the shapes will be in your pattern. Um, I'm suggesting three different shapes, but of course you could change the shapes and uh, do whatever you're comfortable doing. And I'm probably going to make three of each so that I can have, I've got three levels um, of my lock gate, so I can have some on each, um, each level. So again, just the same as the grass, we're going to iron a piece of the heat and bond onto the back of one of these pieces. Now these are a little bit longer, a little bit more than a square, so that we can do all three shapes at the same time. So I'm just going to iron that to there. And again, I've already cut some wires, hopefully, if I can find them, so that we can lay them in between. Because again, these uh, little leaf shapes are also wired, like the grass was. And I did have some wires right sitting here. Here they are, just waiting for me. So this time you're going to be need to be just a little bit more creative with your pencil. So I'm taking the paper off the back, so I've got the heat and bond glue on the back of my strip here. And I'm just going to pop three shapes on. Again, they vary slightly in length. doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'm going to pop one there. So these need to be fairly well spaced and I'm going to bend one just just a little bit just for the fun of it so that you can see that it doesn't really matter if they're not absolutely straight and pop the third one on there as well. So there is some shapes as a guideline in your pattern but it's very much whatever happens at the time and it, it's not an important shape, something for you to worry about when you're making this because uh, because of the wire and things everything moves a little bit you just want to keep the wire down to one end if you can so that the end of your stems is wired so that's good I'm going to iron that in place with the wire in between Flip that over and hopefully that'll all go together and you'll be able to see where your three wires are sitting. Then we're going to take the little mechanical pencil again. I'm going to suggest if you're using a lighter colour, like this nice yellowy sort of colour, that, that's probably easier to see your little drawing on. So the shapes I've suggested, and there are some going to be included in your pattern. Um, but they, as I said, it's not critical and really you need to free draw these anyway. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw just lightly up around the wire like we did for the grass. But I'm also going to change some of this and I'm going to just do a little leaf shape here. Don't be panicking about whether your leaves are any good or not. They'll be absolutely perfect. So just... not an artist. I've got three leaf shapes there. Now this one is a little bit crooked so I'm going to make good use of that little crookedness and I'm just going to do more of a sort of a fun, funny little almost a ferny type shape. And again just free draw this. The pattern is there but it's a bit hard to trace on when we're doing this wired system because if you traced it first you'd have a great deal of difficulty positioning your wire in the right place. So just something that's vaguely leafy will be absolutely fine. And for the third one it's a kind of dotty sort of shape so again just trace around that wire and then pop a big dot on the end and then some dotty bits down. As I said, this is not meant to be a test in your artistic abilities. And now we're going to take that to the machine, like, like with the grass, and free motion stitch it. So I'll stitch one of them because I think you could probably work out how it all works after we've done one of them. So I'm going to do this one at the end first. 
So again, I'm free motion stitching. Everything's set up here. I've still got the grey thread in. And I'm going to come up either side of that, that wire, just like we did on the grass. But when I get to the top, I'm going to go round that bit of a shape that I've drawn. And again, don't panic if you're not right on your line. You just want an approximate leafy shape there. And then follow the wire back down. And then keep coming back up. And then I'd like a little vein in my leaf here, so I'm just now going to wander out just a little curvy line, not trying to do it straight, and right over. You can cross over that wire, as long as you're going slow, you won't do any harm. So I've done the leaf vein twice, both sides, but now I'm going to come and do that leaf shape. As I said, this is all quite approximate. Don't panic, the lines don't have to be right on top of each other, they should just be close by. And I think it's a good idea to go around things twice, because we're just using the raw edge. It just will give it a nice little firm edge. So now I've got to the next leaf, so back on the veins again. So you might find you've got some different threads that you want to use. Variegated threads would be fabulous with this. On the veins again. And you could put as much detail in as you choose. And sometimes we get out of sequence and we go round and round. Now this one here has still got a little bit of wire in it, but I'm going to, still going to give it a little bit of a vein up at the top there. And then come around that top leaf again. And then because I've been mostly coming up one side, I'm going to go all the way back down this side of the stand. And there, that is now a free motion bit of green foliage. So you can see I've done all the stitching on that. And I'm going to cut it out now. So to do these other shapes, you do exactly the same thing. So come up and do your stem bit first, then outline, and just go around everything twice in general. It's quite a good idea to do that. And then on here, same thing, come up the stem, then come back up and do this, and do a couple of rounds on the circle, back to the stem, up, a couple of rounds, and back, and so on, until you've done the whole lot of shapes. And then do several of these, as many as you want to do for your lock gate. And so now I'm just going to cut that out just the same as we did with the grass. Close by, try not to clip any of your stitching, but don't leave too much of a gap because it will, with time, start fraying a bit. And just around all your leaf shape into the stem and up. So lots of lots of fun to be had. This is a a wonderfully creative um, option for doing things. You can do all sorts of shapes and things because you can give it a little bit of body with that wiring. And so I'm sure you know how to keep cutting. I probably don't have to show you the cutting all the way. I've got some already cut out here. So this is that shape here, much the same as I've done there. They all vary slightly which is really good because if you look at a plant, everything is slightly different. Plants are not all absolutely exact with their shaping. You want them to be slightly, some slightly longer, some slightly shorter. So give things a little bit of a chance to be a little bit different. The variety is what you want um, rather than having everything absolutely identical. So it's probably quite good to, to do the freehand tracing rather, uh, sorry, the freehand drawing rather than tracing because tracing would give you an exact size and shape every time, where the freehand, nobody's going to notice, because once you've done all this, and like I showed you with the grass, once you pop that in and you start bending and twisting that, nobody can really see, and it actually just looks amazing. It looks like you've been really clever, and you have. So that's how we're going to do some of the greenery. So the next thing to do when you've done all your greenery, it's getting exciting now, 
actually can start popping it together, is you need to start playing around. So we've got three panels. You've got those markings that you drew on your background there. So you need to have a little think about how much you'd like to have of what where. So have a little play. So your stems are going to come to that, this, sorry, your A line is the top one, then you had a B, and a C, and a D. So the stems are going to come to the bottom edge here, they're going to come to your C line, and they're going to come to your A line at the top. So have a little play where you think you might like to pop some bits and pieces. I'm going to have some bits and pieces of grass in there. Um, don't panic too much whether they're all the different lengths and sizes and shapes because that's how it's all going to work. Um, you might think you want to have some of this flopping down a little bit, in which case you might want to remember to pop a little piece of that there. Um, and you might want to put some of these somewhere. They might, they might like to be over here perhaps. And these ones might like to perhaps be over here over here in the corner. So have a little play with where you want to put things, but particularly work, I'm suggesting that you work from the um, lower edge upwards. And then in the strips that we cut, we cut some medium green strips that were one inch wide and 12 and a half long, because this is 12 and a half inches here. So when you're comfortable with what you're going to pop in your lower edge, with the raw edges level here, or sticking out slightly further if you if something's longer and you want it shorter, well it can just stick down a little bit further. So when you've positioned everything that you want to on this lower edge, then I'd suggest that you take your one of your green medium green strips and we're going to lay that so that those raw edges there are level and we're going to do a quarter inch seam just in there so that that will then flip back having included all the bottom the stems of your plants there and then we're going to do a line of stitching along there so and then then we're going to work on the the next level up and we're going to do the same thing we're lining up with your C line and with the bottom edge of your strip we're going to stitch quarter of an inch up from that and that's going to flip over including all your bits and the same thing at the top so the pattern goes through all that so I suggest you have a look at that and have some fun with where your little plants are growing. So I thought I'd just go through quickly how we're doing this next bit of sewing. Um, so I've, I've already started doing some just so that you can see the various stages. So I suggested we start at the bottom level first and then move up and up. So that's what I've done. I've done the bottom, that and that. So I've done this exactly the same down the lower edge. I had my raw edges level at the bottom. You can see there's a couple of little bits of stem sticking out. That's not a problem. Um, and I've just popped some pins in just to hold them more or less in place so that when I'm sewing them, they're going to be where we want them to be. So now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and with my quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to come along and sew right across there. And I thought because it is a little bit different, I might just show you how I've done that. Um, take the pins out as I go and sewing straight over the ends of these stems. Just take it slowly because of the wires in there, you don't want to cause any problems but uh, they'll probably just find their own little place. And just make sure you've got the ends of all the stems there sitting nicely. coming together nicely now and quite exciting. So I've done my seam there and so then what I've done is bring that iron to it and I've just, so that edge was level with that A line, so that raw edge of the screen is, is just, that line is just under there so that is all level with that so I'm just going to flip that over and press that down now, which is what I've done with the next one down already, ready to show you. So I've already done that with this one, that line there, the, the raw edge of the green was level with my line C, and this one here was level with the bottom of the background. And now on this line here, and I'm going to do that with these ones in a minute as well, I've just done two rows of 
straight stitching and I've got my walking foot on now because I'm sewing right through because we're quilting as we go with this. We're not going to have to come back and quilt. So all the stitching is coming through onto the back of the quilt as well. Um, so I've done two lines of sewing, about an eighth of an inch from the fold and then an eighth of an inch again. And then I've just left the rest of it. We are going to be covering that raw edge with another fabric shortly. And then so when you've done all those, then we're going to pop these, I can take these pins out now because they're sewn in. So again, when you're doing this little line, two lines of sewing, just take it slowly because you'll be going over those ends that have got the wires in. And then we're going to put the darkest rust strip, again they're the same size as your green ones, and we're going to line one up with the top there and do our quarter inch seam allowance and that's going to flip up. And we're going to do the same thing here, we're going to line that raw edge up there with your line B, do your quarter inch seam allowance and then that is going to flip up. So that these raw edges are going to be sitting in facing each other in the middle there. And the same thing here with line D, line that raw edge along line D, do your quarter inch seam allowance and press it up and also do your two lines of sewing the same as we're doing on the green. And so that will work quite nicely for setting ready for when we put the actual lock gate bits on top. So we'll go away and get all that done and then I'll show you the next bit. So. I've been quite busy getting the next little bit ready to show you. So we had these raw edges in between here, but I've now covered those with these dark green strips. So what I've done there is I've cut my strip, tells you how wide to cut it in the pattern. I've cut it to length, which will be 12 and a half inches, and I've just pressed in the long raw edges. Now just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. They shouldn't meet in the middle. There should be a little bit of a gap. Um, but it's just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch all the way along. And then I've positioned that right over the middle of where those raw edges were from your uh, medium green and your dark rusty colour. And then I've stitched, and if you can see that, I've stitched really close to the edge of the folded edge. Just a straight stitch either side. And then I'm going to do some free motion quilting in there. I thought it should look a little bit like a wood grain, so I'm hoping that I've achieved that. I'll show you how I've gone about doing that. So I've done that one already. I've done either side on there and I've done some free motion quilting there. And so now I'm just going to show you how to do that free motion in there. I've already stitched that bit on. So what I did was I got myself a little piece of paper. So in your mind it always helps when you're free motioning. You could draw it on there if you felt that you really wanted to, but I probably think that if you can just draw it on a piece of paper that will give you some idea of where you're trying to go. So as you can see I've done a little sketch here so all I did was I imagined that my strip was sort of so wide and then I've just wobbled along a little bit as you might with a wood grain and then I've come along and I've wobbled and I've done sort of like a little knotty thing and then I've just come actually wiggled back out again and kept going and then I've come another line along and you end up with something that's basically a little bit like a wood grain it gives that impression of a timber and because these are timber some lock gates I have to say are metal but mine are timber today the majority of the ones I've been operating have been timber so I quite like that look so I'll show you what I've done I've got my free motion quilting foot on here drop my feet teeth and I'm just going to quilt this little bit here just to show you how I've gone about that because we're going to be doing this same quilting around in the border as well. So I've got my seam stitching close either side so everything's in place and now I'm just going to wibbly wobbly along a little bit in a particular pattern and I might think that maybe there should be a little knot here so I might just do one here wiggle my way out of that again and then I can come back wibbly wobbling really it's, it's kind of just a bit of fun 
we will all like a little bit of fun now and then. This is quite a knotty little piece of wood, this one. And that didn't take very long. And so there I've got another piece of what I'm hoping looks a little bit like a, a timber bar across there. And so that, and that, as you can see, I just show you the back. You can't see very well because I've used a pattern fabric. But that's all come through onto the back, which is quilting over the quilting because we'd already quilted those straight lines on the background. But it's all sitting quite nicely. This um, warm and natural cotton batting is lovely to work on. Everything sits really nicely. So now I'm going to do the same thing with my borders. I'm going to cut the sides to length and I'm going to stitch that on with my quarter inch seam. I'm going to flip that over, do a little close line of stitching like we've done on the edge here. And then I'm going to do my timber grain in there. So I'm going to do both the sides and then I'm going to come right the way across and do the top and bottom in exactly the same way. And then it'll be ready for binding. But I'll come back and show you that bit when we get there. So I'm getting really excited. It's getting closer and closer. So I've done all my quilting that looks vaguely like wood grain on the borders and that sashing. And now I've started trimming my quilt. So I just thought I'd show you how I finished off that. So I've actually trimmed three sides, just level with my edge, just making it nice and straight. And now I'm, as I'm going, I'm lining it up with the markings on my board so that I can keep everything nice and square. And I'm just going to trim this last side. So all I need to do is make sure that things are sitting nice and square because I've got it all sitting straight around and I can just trim that off so that I've got a nice level edge there. So now we're ready to do the binding. How exciting is that? Now there's one other little thing because it's a wall hanging I thought I'd put a little sleeve along the top at the back so that I could put a little dowling or something to hang it from. So I've made a little sleeve here. I just cut a strip that's three and a half inches wide and the same length as my wall hanging is wide. This is how I usually do a sleeve. And then I've just folded in about half an inch or perhaps slightly more than half an inch at each end of that. And I've just done a little line of stitching and then I've pressed it in half. So by turning it in just that um, by starting off the width of the quilt and then turning in those edges a little bit over half an inch that will sit quite nicely along the top edge there with a little bit of space here because you're going to have your binding and things and because I'm going to include that along that raw edge at the top there in my binding and I'll just pop a couple of pins in that just to hold it so I'm putting the pins straight up and down so that I can leave them there as I come around and do my binding so I've just centered it so that there's pretty much the same at each end. And I'll pop another one in the middle here. And then I'm going to, after I've, that's been included when I do the binding, I'll just hand sew, slip stitch the, that down and then I've got something to slip a little rod or something in there. So that's all ready for that bit now. But I'm just going to show you now how I do my binding. I'm going to bind it entirely by machine. You may prefer to do it a different way. Um, so when I was cutting the fabrics, because we're working with fat eights and these are slightly longer because the fabric is extra wide, which is really nice, I cut three strips from my fat eighth and this is the same colour as I've used um, for the dark, the darkest rust in the wall hanging as well. And So I'm joining them up because it's not long enough on its own obviously and so I, when I join my binding strips I like to join them um, diagonally. So that when you open it out, and I've already done one join here, you've got this nice seam here and you press the seams open so that it sits nice and flat because we're going to be folding that and you don't want a great sort of straight bulky seam. So if you do it, join it on the diagonal like that. So I'll just quickly show you here. So I've actually popped a pin in so that I've got it round the right way and don't sew the wrong side to the right side because this fabric is much the same both sides. And I'm just going to sew from this little point right through to this point. Now you might want to draw a line through there. I'm just going to chance it and sew through from corner to corner there. So that's come up pretty well. 
Now I'm going to trim that as soon as I find my ruler again. So just give myself a quarter of an inch seam allowance there. Trim off that, don't need those. And I'm just going to press that. So I'm going to press that seam open. side quickly too and then I'm going to just quickly trim off those little wings that are sitting out there because they'll just be annoying so I've got a nice straight edge and that works really well for me so now I'm going to join my uh, sorry I'm going to attach my binding so I because I'm going to be doing it entirely by machine I'm going to be putting it onto the back and rolling it to the front and then stitching it down by machine so I'm going to start on the back and when I start my bindings I like to start with this as a diagonal so I'm going to just press that in. This is so that I can tuck the end in when I get round to the other end. There's different ways of doing bindings but this is how I like to do mine. So now I'm going to go to the machine and I've got my walking foot on which is really good because it helps everything feed nicely. This is so exciting this project because as we've quilted it as we go, we don't even have to come back and quilt it now because it's all done. Now, again, with your quarter inch seam allowance, so I've cut my binding two and a quarter inches wide, and I'm just going to sew just to the end of that folded down corner there. And take it out again, and now I'm going to, I like to fold mine as I go. You may prefer to have yours all pressed ahead of time. I find that if I fold mine as I go, when I'm rolling that around, that allows that folded bit, instead of being a hard fold, to sort of just be a softer little roll. It works for me anyway. So, Okay, so now I'm going to come back on. Now I'm going to leave a gap because I want to tuck my end in when I come back. So I'm going to leave a couple of inches before I start sewing again. And this time I've got all the raw edges together. So I've got my binding folded over. I'm just sewing in a quarter of an inch from the edge. Now when I get to a corner, I'm going to stop a quarter of an inch before I actually get to the corner. You may want to put a marker if you're not sure where that is. And do a little back stitch just to hold that. Take it out of the machine. And now I'm going to fold this, again holding those raw edges together, I'm going to fold it through the bias so that this fold is on the diagonal and it goes right through the corner of the quilt there. And then I'm going to flip it back over so that now it, it folds with a fold level with the raw edge of the quilt. Not in, but right on that raw edge. And now I'm going to take that back to the machine and start sewing right from the end again that quarter of an inch. And this is going to allow us to do the, a nice little mitre on the corner. And I'm going to go all the way along to the next corner and do exactly the same thing. And when I'm putting my bindings on, I just add a very small amount of tension. You don't want to pull it really tight and pull it in, but just because you're working with something that's quilted that's got a little bit of bounce to it, you want to put a, an edge on it that's firm but not tight. So I just apply just a small amount of pressure in that binding as I go. So I'm going to come up to the next corner and we'll just do this next corner and then I'll... Okay, so we're going to stop a quarter of an inch before the corner with a back stitch. Take it out of the machine. So I've stopped stitching, as you can see here, maybe a quarter of an inch before the end of the quilt. And that's so that I can do this little fold that goes right through, a diagonal fold that goes right through the corner of the quilt there. And then I'm going to flip that around so that my fold now is straight and right along the edge of the quilt. And this will sit comfortably coming along the raw edge here. 
People have different ways of doing things, but I have found that this one works really well for me. So this is how I do it, and I'm going to continue on around now till I get back, and I'll show you how I tuck the edge in there. So I've been all the way around, and I'm just coming back to where I started now, so I thought I'd show you how I do that bit. So as I get to this bit where I'm overlapping, I let that overlap and continue on till I'm a little way on there. And then I get my scissors and I cut the rest of that little strip away, just short of where I started sewing, so that that will sit right inside there. And I can bring this bit over and I can just bring that nice to that edge and you'll find that that sits in really comfortably um, as a way of overlapping that binding and then I'm back to where I started sewing and that binding is nicely tucked inside there but what I then do do because it's created quite a bit of bulk with that double area there and um, quite often I'll just trim away a little bit of that bulk that's sitting just in that overlapped area just because otherwise it can cause quite a ridge when you when you fold your binding over but if you just trim away just a little bit of the excess bulk not too much then it's ready to turn over and so now what we have to do is sew that binding down so I'm going to come around probably um, starting more or less where we finished putting it on so I'm going to roll that edge over and I'm going to sew close to the folded edge there. And what that will do is that should be just past the seam where we sewed it on. So you will see a little line of sewing just inside on the back. But if you use a matching thread, it doesn't really show. It certainly um, has never worried me to do that. Now I am using a contrasting thread because I'm using the same colour thread all the way through on this project. You, often I would um, do a matching thread, but I thought seeing as I'd started, I might as well finish this way. So as I go along, I'm just tucking that around so that you get that nice folded edge. And I'm just sewing quite close to that fold. And I'll take it up and show you how I do the corners to get a nice mitre. I know some of you would prefer to hand sew your binding to the back. I did include that little sleeve, just mind that doesn't get caught up in this process, it should sit flat on the back. So when you're coming up to a corner, make sure that that's all tucked in and there's no threads in your way. Keep coming. And then as you get to the corner, let that fold come straight over and you've got an angle here and then you should be able to fold that so that that fold meets that fold at the corner and just keep sewing. You could pop a pin in there if you wanted to but I find I can manage to just keep sewing till my needle's in the bit that's folded over from this edge. Leave the needle down, pivot it round and sometimes I just do a little back stitch just to make sure and then away I go. Just one little back stitch, not a great string of them. And then continue on all the way around till I get back to the join. And you can see just here that there is just a tiny, there's a line of sewing just inside. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Um, but it's really not going to be an issue. It's not going to cause any problems anywhere. And that's how I do the binding. So I'll just continue on this and then we'll have a little bit of fun in a minute with the rest of it. Well, I am so excited. I have finished the little lock gate with the binding. I've got my sleeve. I've just got to hand sew that down on the back. I'm really thrilled that the back is all sitting nicely and it's all quilted. And now is the fun part because now we've got a gate and we've got all these things growing on it that are wired so we can now play with those. So we can have them doing all sorts of exciting things. You 
can twist your grass and bend it and and just make it look how you want it to look because this is the bit where your garden grows and I might have a little bit of foliage hanging down and you because you can bend the wire so much you can kind of just have so much fun and just change the shapes of things if you're finding things are sticking out a little bit you could just pop a little stitch to hold things down if, if they weren't behaving quite right but I think because we've done this extra line of stitching over the top where we've got our seams in that they should actually sit quite nicely for you and it's not that easy to do from this angle I have to say so I just wanted to show you though the possibilities if you wire some of the the fabrics and things um, that what you can do with it and how interesting you can make it with really just so much fun it's just creative fun there's no really right or wrong way you can just enjoy it so thank you so much to Oakshot for these wonderful fabrics that inspired me to do this lock gate because I've been actually opening and closing lock gates at a huge rate just lately and they're quite heavy but to be able to see the beauty in them and to be able to reproduce something to me that reminds me of these lock gates has been so much fun so thank you to Oakshot and thank you